everybody welcome to arise shine with john and carla really really glad you guys tuned in we're going to continue today talking about faith but we're going to talk about it from a little different angle and i just wanted to remind everybody too again of what this program is based on there's a scripture and the bible says in micah rejoice not against me O mine enemy when i fall i shall yes. arise Sometimes you just need to say, devil, shut up. Quit laughing. I'm coming up. God's helping me. Everything's going to be great and powerful and wonderful. And everything's going to be greater than even all right. So we just want to encourage you with that scripture. That's what this program is based on. Carla, say hi. We can get into the Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and just spending some time with us this morning. Um, I just wanted to let you know, you may not know this, but we do have someone live on Facebook to interact with you. So be sure that in the message area there that you say hi, tell us who you are, where you're watching from. If you have any prayer requests or any questions or anything, you can type it in that message area because there is somebody live there to talk to you. And so thanks for for tuning in today. Share, share, share this on Facebook because there are a lot of people who need to know some things about faith. We all do. That's right. We all do. do. And you know, sometimes people are a little intimidated to witness or to share their faith or to share the gospel with other people. One really easy way to do this is just hit that share button, share this program on your own Facebook, and you are just now witnessing to all your family and friends on Facebook. So it's really easy to do. And so share, share, share. We promise we won't get weird, right? (laughs) <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We, we promise. Um, you, you, your friends will be glad you shared it. <laughs> yes. And we have a saying around here, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. <laughs> yes. But like he said, we're going we're gonna to talk about faith today, but we're going to come at it from a little bit different angle. Um, a lot of times you hear us talk about faith here at Faith Heights Church, of course, obviously. Um, but today we're going to talk about what faith isn't. You know, sometimes yeah. it's just as important to know what faith isn't as it is to know what faith is. Because we want to make sure that we really know what That's faith good. is, and sometimes we have to know what it isn't to know what it That's is. That's right. That's so good. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's really good. So, Process of elimination. Exactly. A lot of people think they're in faith, mm-hmm. but they are not in faith. That's right. They get disappointed, and they think faith doesn't work. When all along, they weren't really in Bible faith to begin with. That's Maybe right. they were in hope. Maybe they had great desire. Yes. Maybe they really wanted something. Maybe they had strong need. Mm -hmm. But faith is different than all those things I just mentioned. Faith isn't hope. Faith isn't desire. Faith isn't need. Faith isn't wanting something real bad. Faith isn't mental assent. Right. A lot of people think mental assent is faith, and it's not. It's a mind thing when it's mental assent, but faith is of the heart. Yes. And if we can find out what faith isn't, then we can find out what faith is more accurately by eliminating these things that feel like faith, right. seem like faith, right. and they're not faith at all. Yeah. Carl and I have been pastoring for 34 years, mm-hmm. 30, go, come up on 35, and we have seen people testify that they had a faith failure or they feel like they had a faith failure. Say right. something about right. that. Well, I used to even say that sometimes um, ignorantly now that I look back at it, but that something was a faith failure. But really, can you have a faith failure? It's impossible. Is there such a thing as a faith failure? There's not. So and if you think you're having faith failures just because something didn't happen the way you thought it was supposed to happen, then it's going to hinder you from believing God in the future. And it's going to give you the idea that sometimes faith works, sometimes it doesn't. That's not true. Faith always works. There's no such thing as a faith failure. So so explain that. Is there such a thing as a faith failure? I think what the problem is, is that people think they're in faith, but they're in hope. Yeah. Are there yeah. in wishing or wanting something yeah. real bad? And the, the the sad thing that we've seen in our church is there is people that have actually gotten mad mm. at the faith message, which is a message Jesus preached. Yes. He constantly talked about faith and believing. Um, 
But if you think you're in faith, but you're not in faith, and something doesn't happen like you wanted it to happen, then you're going to think there's something wrong with the faith message. Right. And we don't want anybody to think there's something wrong with them. It's just faith is a big subject. You know, I mean, This is. is a spiritual force that you have to understand. There's spiritual mm -hmm. things involved with it. You can't figure faith out with your natural mind. Right. It's right. of the heart. And the only way we're going to know about faith is through the Word of God. I mean, faith <clears throat> is found in... I remember I did a teaching one time about faith and grace and how that they seem to be you know, two messages in the earth realm, you know, going side by side when really they should be one message. Yes. Because one without the other is nothing. Exactly. But I looked up the word faith. The actual word, the word faith is found more times in the Bible than even the word grace. And if you had believed to that, way more. Yeah. And so they're both very important subjects, but faith is something God wanted us to study. Yes. He mentioned it hundreds and hundreds of times in the Bible. And so we need to talk about what faith isn't for a while. So let me read you a right. scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 1. This is the Holy Spirit through Paul the Apostle telling us some interesting things here about Timothy and his family. It says in verse 5, Paul said, When I call to remembrance... The unfeigned faith, remember that phrase, unfeigned faith that is in you, Timothy, which was first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. So this verse tells us right here, why would you say unfeigned faith and right. not just say the faith that was in your grandma and your mother, it's in you too? Right. right. Why say unfeigned faith? Right. Feigned means false Feigned means not real, deluded. Mm. And this scripture says, the faith that was in your grandma, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and in you, Timothy, was unfeigned faith. Yeah. Well, if there's a unfeigned, you know, not false, then there must be a false. Right. And it must look a lot like the real, or why would you, why would it, you know, say unfeigned faith? It'd be just, that's not faith at all. No, it right. looks like faith sometimes. It seems like faith. Sometimes it sounds like faith, but there is a genuine faith. Yes. And a lot of times to find out what that genuine faith is, you got to find out what faith isn't. What looks like faith, but isn't faith. Right. What sounds like faith, but isn't faith. What seems like faith, but isn't faith. How are we going to tell what faith really mm. is? Right. From, from the word the Bible. Yes. And the Bible has certain definitions of faith. The Bible has examples of people in faith, how they acted, what their heart condition was, what their words were, and we see from the scriptures what faith is. A lot a while in my life when I first got saved, I got faith and hope mixed up. I really hoped for something. I, I was wishing for something. I wanted something. I thought, man, I want this so bad. I just, I just believe I got it. Well, I looked up the word want, and it starts with a W. I looked up the word faith. It starts <laughs> yeah. with an F, right? They're two yeah. totally different yeah. words. And so Paul said here, there is an unfeigned faith, which means there must be a feigned faith. And this is where we have to be cautious mm -hmm. because a lot of people have shipwrecked their yes, faith, yes. left faith, got mm. mad at faith teachers and preachers. Well, I have to I have a newsflash. Jesus was a faith teacher. Yes. Paul was a faith teacher yes. and preacher. They preached and taught faith all the time. Don't get mad at the message. Just learn more. Right. Go to a little more faith school. You know, get a little more built up in these areas yeah. because you don't want to throw out the gem just right. because something looked like it was the gem, but was it? I mean, you can't throw faith away. Well, and don't be embarrassed if you don't know totally what faith is yet. Or I think sometimes people get embarrassed and, and they think that there's something wrong with them if they're not at a certain level of faith. You know, we've had people in the church over the last 34 years who have had to go to the hospital for something and they didn't want to tell us because they thought they should have been in more faith. That's not right. That's not right at all. We need to be honest with ourselves. And are we at a first grade level of faith or a sixth grade level or a 12th or a high school or a college or whatever? Yeah. We need to be growing and learning just like we do in everything in life. We need to 
admit where we're at, not be embarrassed about where we're at in faith, and learn and grow as we go. And never be ashamed of where you're at in faith. You know, hope is not faith, but hope is better than no hope. Hope is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So just admit where you're at. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. And don't give up on the faith message because you weren't at the level you needed to be to receive something. Exactly. Just admit, you know what? I have some growing to do. Yeah. That's right. I have some learning to do, yep. and then apply yourself to the word and learn and grow. Here, right. Here's the interesting thing about growing in faith. God will meet you where you're at. Yes. He can't meet you where you pretend to be. Oh, that's good. You should say God that again. God doesn't work with pretend. God will meet you where you're at. He cannot meet you where you pretend to be, oh. and you're really not there. Sometimes people pretend, it may be in front of other people or whether, uh, whatever, but you know what? God works with honesty. It's yes. the truth that will make you free. And if the truth is you're not quite there yet, admit it, and God will meet you where you're yes. at, and you'll still yes, get yes, victory. He'll yes. still encourage you to grow in faith, but he will meet, he can't meet pretend. That's right. He cannot meet pretend. So if we're uh. pretending we're in faith, we're not going to, like, let's say we're pretending, somebody pretending, you know, I don't need to go to the doctor. I don't need to take any medicine. I believe God. I believe God. But you know in your heart you're not fully persuaded. you still got some fears you're dealing with. You're still a little wondering if this is going to work. Is God really going to come through for you? The better thing to do in that situation is say, Lord, <clears throat> I just don't sense right now I have the faith to just believe for an outright divine miracle and not go to the hospital and not take some medicine as opposed to you working through the doctor and working through the medicine. Right. I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to the doc, Father, and yes. I'm believing you're going to give him wisdom. And yes. He's going to prescribe properly. He's not going to uh, misdiagnose. We're going to get to the root of this thing with some natural help, but you're going to be the God behind the scenes, supernaturally helping the natural help. That's right. Be, and God will be able to meet you there. And you talk about a miracle through doctors, a miracle through medicine, a miracle through a surgery. We've seen it happen time and time yes. again because yes. God meets people where they're really at, not where they wish they were at. Right. And there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor if you need to. Let me Let me ask you this. Who gave the doctors and the whole medical knowledge in our world, who gave, who gave them that wisdom? Who, who gave them that knowledge? Who made their brain. Who right. did that? Right. It wasn't the devil, because he doesn't want you to take medicine and get healed or have a surgery and, and get better or get healed. So God works through doctors. He's That's all right. for doctors. Yep. So don't ever be embarrassed about going to God a doctor. God is a doctor. Yes. That's How could right. he be against doctors? He is a doctor. Yes. He is called the great physician. Yes. I am the Lord that healeth you. That's and right. so again, let's reiterate this, that Paul was talking about, when I remember the unfeigned faith that is in you, Timothy, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I'm persuaded in you also. Another little side thought about this verse, faith should be passed on. Mm -hmm. Faith should be like a generational blessing. Oh, that's good. That overrides all generational curses. Yeah. Faith needs to be passed on to our kids, like from Lois to Eunice and from Eunice to Timothy. Faith needs to be a generational blessing. Yes. That's what needs to be being passed on in Christian families is the faith that we're imparting into our kids yes. and in our grandkids oh, because that's yes. the most powerful commodity we could the bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children a lot of times we think that's only money no mm. i think one of the best inheritance to leave somebody is the faith you built up all your life poured into your kids lay hands on them before you give up the ghost and now it's in them yes. fully and that'll see them through anything even that a million dollars can't see them through that's right so there's nothing like faith faith is more precious than gold the mm -hmm. bible says mm -hmm. and so do you have anything you want to say before I go to no, the next go, scripture? No, go ahead. So I'm going to read you a scripture now in Mark chapter 9, where a man did not quite have the faith he wished he would have had, but he still got a healing for his son. Because he wasn't pretending, he wasn't concerned mm -hmm. about what people thought if he said, Lord, help my unbelief. Sounds like a terrible confession, right? Not if it's true. That's if right. it's true, it's a truthful confession, and God can yes. work with truth. Yes. Amen. So let's read That's this good. here. The boy was having epileptic seizures mm -hmm. here in Mark chapter 9. And there was actually a demon spirit involved with this case. And of course, all epilepsy is not because a demon spirit is involved. Some things are, are not demons. There's medical things in the body. This one happened to be a demon spirit. All right. And so the man came to the disciples. 
-hmm. and said, please set my son free. I know you have power. Jesus gave it to you. Please, you have power over all devils. You have power over all disease. Help my boy. Help my boy. And the Bible says they couldn't. They tried everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if strife got in or whatever. You read a few previous verses. Their faith wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. And they tried, but no results. So Jesus comes down off the mountain with Peter, James, and John after transfiguration, time of powerful prayer, comes to him, and all the people come to him, and the man says, Jesus, uh, uh, help me, help my son. He's, he's, he's in big trouble here. And... I asked your disciples to cure him, and they could not. Right. Well, they had the power, but something was messing with their faith. And so they brought him to Jesus, and Jesus didn't go, well, hey, um, if they prayed for you, you know, the ones I delegated, if they, had, if they didn't get your son healed, then it's just God's will that your son stay sick. No, mm. it's not. No. Even if the best in the land pray for you, That's right. even if the apostles of the Lord Jesus himself minister to you and you don't get healed, that's no sign God wants you to stay that's sick. Right. That's, that's no right. sign you're not supposed to be healed. Jesus comes on the scene and says, Oh, faithless, perverse generation, bring him to me. You guys didn't get him healed. That doesn't mean God wants him sick. Bring him to me. This thing ain't over yet. Yeah. And so they brought the boy to Jesus. And I'm going to read you from there. And it says, um, let me go to the verse here. It says, they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit tore the boy, convulsed him. He fell on the ground and the boy wallowed foaming. So in other words, Jesus said, bring the boy to me. The devil immediately gives this boy a fit, trying to throw Jesus off, get him to jump the gun, do something immediately instead of be led by the Spirit. Mm. So Jesus just stripes up a conversation while the boy's convulsing. Yeah. The devil's trying to get Jesus to jump the gun, yeah. to move out of line with the leading of the Spirit. Mm. So here's the boy just flipping and flopping, foaming at the mouth, rolling in the fire, rolling in the water. And Jesus just says, hey, Father, how long is this since this came unto him? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love Jesus? We yeah. should never respond to the devil and what he's doing. Yes. We that's should right. always respond to the Holy Ghost about what the devil's doing, and yep. that may take a few minutes. Yeah. The devil sometimes tries to get us to jump the gun. Like with the four days in Lazarus that we heard Sunday, last Sunday with Dominic. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he wait four days? I don't know, but he better be glad he did because <laughs> he 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 would have missed God if he would have yeah. jumped the gun yeah. through emotions. So he, the father said, it's happened to him of a child. And oftentimes it's cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, have compassion on us and help us. Hmm. What, 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 if you can do anything? Right. It's not, right. A, it's not a matter of what the Lord can do. He can do anything. That's right. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said unto the father, it's if you can believe. All things are possible to him that believes. So immediately the father of the child cried out and said with a loud voice, with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Mm. Now, most word of faith people right there would go, I've never said anything like that. Mm. And that's why maybe people haven't gotten any results either. That's right. You can wish you were here. Yeah. But if this is where you're really at, God can work with where that's you're really right. at. That's and right. this is an interesting scripture because this man showed right here. This scripture tells us, right? The Holy Ghost had this recorded right here to mm -hmm. show us. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not where we want to be in our faith. Even if we're not at the level we wished we were. If we'll be honest and say, Lord, I believe, but I'm having a little struggle with this thing. Maybe I think I might want to go to the doctor or try some medicine. If you will believe God where you're really at, the power of God will come where you're really at. Yes, that's right. Just like this boy. Yep. Just that's like good. this man. Yeah. He realized he wasn't quite there. Right. He could have pretended. Right. Right. But if you pretend, God can't meet pretend. Right. He can meet where you're really at. What, yeah. Anything you want well, to say? Well, that just reminds me of, of, of this book. We have a book here by Frederick K.C. Price, who just went home to be with the Lord last week. 89 years and, old. And um, Yes, he was 89 years old. He has a book. It's called Faith, Foolishness, and Presumption. And so it just reminds me of that yeah. story. You know, yeah. you, you need to know, are you in faith, foolishness, or presumption? Exactly. And don't be afraid to say, Lord, I believe, but I don't want to be foolish here. I don't want to presume anything. Help my unbelief. Yeah. And he'll show us what That's we need. Right. He'll show us where we need exactly. to. Exactly. What scriptures we need to go to, where we need to get in the word. And yeah. he'll help us to grow. Exactly. Because we Carla. don't ever want to use it as an excuse. Well, Lord, help my unbelief. And then just stay in unbelief. 
we don't want to just use no. that as an excuse. Well, Lord help my unbelief. We want to constantly be grow. growing and learning at the same time. And it's not, it's not trying harder that helps your faith. It's more word that yes. helps your faith. Yes. Faith is, it should, we talked about last week that if we're trying to have faith, we just don't know God very well. Right. Because you don't have to try to trust someone you know very well and you know they have the ability to help you in your situation and loves you. I don't have to try to trust Carla. She didn't have to try to trust me. If we say we're going to be there, we're going to be there. Mm -hmm. And trying to have faith is the result of just not knowing God very well. You may know about him, but intimately knowing him, that's where real faith. I think Brother Hagen yeah. said the, that faith is the child of fellowship with God. And that's just a very true statement mm -hmm. because faith is born out of a relationship, not just right. teachings only. If those teachings are involved in the relationship zone, then absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so real faith, um, I like the words F-A-I-T-H. One day I was trying to put a word to each letter uh -huh. to try to express what faith is. And this is what the Lord gave me. Fully assured in the heart. That's good. Fully assured in the heart. Uh, we're talking full assurance here. Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. And even at 100 years old, he believed he could still have a child, which is absolutely ridiculous to scientific mm -hmm. knowledge. You right. can't have a child when you're 100. Sarah can't have a child. Her womb is, is dead, basically. She'll never be able to have kids, but they had a child because he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was also to perform. Yes. You got to watch out about acting like you're in faith when you're not in faith. Mm -hmm. That can be very very dangerous. It can. How many testimonies, Carla, have we heard of people who had yeah. children yeah. who needed insulin? And mommy and daddy said, no, we're going to believe God. And oh. son, daughter, you don't need to take that insulin. We have faith in God. We have faith in God. And the kid goes into convulsions, we've heard, and died. Yeah. And the, yeah. the, the parents were charged, I think. Yeah. Uh, to a degree yeah. with something. Well, no, no, that's, you, that's where foolishness comes in. Sometimes people hear enough word to think, okay, so if I need to be in faith, I need to put some action, and you do, to your faith. And so they'll just say, like, the doctor gives them a bad report, say cancer. And they go, I don't have cancer. I don't have cancer. Mm, that's dangerous. I don't have cancer. I don't have cancer. That's foolishness. Yes, if you have a report of cancer, yes. Um, your body has cancer, but you can say, I may have cancer in my body, but I believe by his stripes I was healed. That's life-saving, what you just said. Exactly. Totally life-saving. You don't ever want to, faith is not denying the problem, so you don't ever want to say, oh, I don't have a headache, or I don't have cancer, or, I don't, you know, I don't have God this. God can't work with that because it's no, not a truth. No, no, no. You have to, you have to divide between what's faith and what's foolishness. That's right, Carla. What's not real. That's right. So here's the scripture. Romans 4 did not say, faith calls those things that are as though they're not. Right. That is not what faith does. Faith does not call what is as though it's not. Right. Faith calls things that are not that's as they though are. they were. That's right. See, if we call what is as though it's not, that's lying. And man, we just veer off of God's help right there because yeah. he works with truth. Yeah. He works with real. Faith doesn't say, I'm not sick. Faith says, by his stripes I was healed. Right. Because if you're not sick, why need, Why even have 1 Peter 2.24 in the Bible? Right. Sickness never attacked anybody on this planet. We never say, I don't have something or my mm. body doesn't. We just say what we believe more and we override instead right. of deny. Well, I think there's even a, a religion out there. I've heard that oh, yeah, that yeah. actually believes sickness is um, not, not real. real. And it's like, I think it's you know what, science. I've worked in like three different hospitals. I've worked in surgery. I've worked in the, um, well, I've worked in every department there is. I can tell you sickness is real. <laughs> I've seen people with sickness a lot, and I've seen people die with sickness. Yeah. Sickness is real, but we can override what's real in this natural mm -hmm. realm with mm -hmm. what the Word says. So yep. we don't want to deny sickness is real. That's right. We just want to get in faith and believe above That's so um, good. the natural. That's it. That yeah. Override. Push out. Override. Yes. Yeah. yes. So two books I'm going to recommend before we pray. Faith, Foolishness, and Presumption by Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. And also, The Real Faith 
by Kenneth E. Hagan. It's mm. a it's a kind of a mini book. It's not as small as the smallest books, but the real faith. That's, That's a great good. great book. I mean, he talks about some really interesting things, especially in the last chapter about the real faith, so that people aren't disappointed. They don't leave faith. Faith works, friend. Yes, the Bible it does. says faith works. Jesus said all things are possible to them that believe. Let's just grow in faith. Let's grow yes. in our knowledge of faith. Let's don't get, get the faith teachings back out. Don't push them away, saying I tried that and it didn't work. No, we are not of them that draw back That's from right. faith, That's but we are right. them that believe to the saving of the soul. Yes. So let's not be those that draw back. Let's be those that go deeper. Yes. and find more. Spend a little more time. Turn off the TV for a while. Study some more faith messages. Listen to Keith Moore's Faith School. Listen to the things just coming forth in Faith Heights. Yes. And you'll build your faith and you'll see it works. Just don't give up. That's right. So let's pray Amen. for our audience. Father, okay. we're asking that in the name of yes. Jesus that Thank those that are Lord. watching right now and will watch later on an archive open their eyes, yes. reveal to them the real faith. Show them, Father God, that your word has all the answers Amen. and it will bring the light that they need and they will operate in real faith and they will see real results. We just yes. bind any doubt and fear away from the minds of the people Amen. and we say in Jesus' name, be gone fear, be yes. gone doubt. And we say, Father, thank you for light yes. on faith in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, thank you for watching. We gotta sign off for now. Carla, say goodbye. Goodbye. Love, we love you. you. We'll all. talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.